All right, how's everybody doing this morning? We good? Good. Good, good. I'm excited to be here. We got a full house. That means that I got to do something good today. All right, okay, so, so I'm excited. But um, I'm here today to talk about something I'm extremely passionate about. How many people love the work that they do? All right. Um, and I want to talk to you because I think lots of time work gets a bad rap, right? Because our parents grew up and they did a job because they had to make money so that we could go to school and we could, just so they could provide for us. But I think we have an opportunity to be able to do work that matters. How many people want to work on stuff that absolutely matters? Like, so what I'm talking about today is about really getting you to think outside of just creating a website or just, or just the business that you do to really getting into stuff that absolutely matters and makes a difference in people's lives, right? And so, and so this is what this is all about uh, because like I love what I do. I can wear what I want to wear to work. I can wear my office is downtown um, and I have a chance to be able to do that. But it wasn't always like that because I was told to go to school, get a good job. I went into mechanical engineering. I worked at Ford and then my job in and so, and so then I was off being an entrepreneur. Um, and everyone wants to be an entrepreneur until they become one. <laughs> and, once, and once they become an entrepreneur, they, they realize this stuff is really hard. And they don't just pay you because you look good, right? I mean, like, there are, I mean, if there are any pure entrepreneurs in here, you understand the ebbs and flows in entrepreneurship. The people who don't know, then you're not a pure entrepreneur. Because you understand you can have great clients one day that actually pay. And I talk about clients like when the check or when the, when the money is deposited in the account, right? All right, okay, so y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, so again, so as we get started, what I want to do is, is, um, is I want to just share just a little bit about our story, okay, um, and kind of how I got into this space. And it goes back to the documentary that I happened to be a part of back in 2000. And 11. And what happened was is that it really opened up my eyes to the way the world really works and how money works. And people that get opportunities not because they're smarter than you are. And so I learned this term is called meritocracy. I had never heard the other term in my life. But it's where meritocracy talks about the, that the smartest people get the opportunities. But as I began to look at people who were launching tech startups, what I realized is that there was someone who Getting an opportunity who wore flip flops, who didn't even have a pitch deck, who were there a quarter of a million dollars. And, you know, and lots of times what happens in business is that we just happen to do business with people that we are like. And I think that's a human thing. And so I don't necessarily think that people have bad intentions, but I think that when the power is in one group of people to someone else, and so as I look at this, I'm excited about the city of Detroit. But I'm excited because I see a great opportunity. And I want to see us, are we really creating a city for all people? Not just the 2%, but are we creating a city for everybody? And so the work that we're going to do, it really, it really, it really ties into this kind of stuff. So we started this project. It originally started out and it was called Rebrand Detroit. And so we had pitched this idea to the Knight Foundation. And they had, and they had this thing that was called the Knight City Challenge. And during this Knight City Challenge, there were 7,000 people that applied. Okay, so I was like, I, I mean, I was like, I wasn't even interested in even applying for the program, right? I applied for the program. We were one of 32 people who actually won. So I mean that it was less than two percent. I had a better chance of actually hitting the lottery, which I don't play, than actually winning. And we won, and we all of a sudden had a bag of money. And so now, if you've ever, if you've ever gotten a grant or anything like that and your numbers publicized, and you start to talk to contractors and people, then everybody's trying to spend all the money you have. Like, I mean, like, like, I got proposals for, like, almost all the money to do one thing. I'm like, dude, there's no way I'm going to pay you this amount to do, you know. And so it began to help me to understand that the work that we were doing, we had a year to accomplish this goal of trying to take what we saw in Midtown and Downtown Detroit and bring that into a neighborhood. And once I got into Grandma Rosedale, what I realized is that I wasn't going to be able to accomplish the goal in 365 days because of the other issues in terms of infrastructure and, and just the way that the neighborhood was laid out in terms of trying to help businesses in those communities. And so part of our work we began to realize is that we were really trying to solve the wrong problem, right? Because we were bringing thought leaders into a neighborhood, but as a part of that process, what we realized is that a lot of these businesses, they, were, they weren't even online. They weren't even visible. 
And so, and so those were the things that we had to kind of focus on. And so as we began to not take this idea, we went to WordPress and we pitched this idea. We said there's 28 million small businesses in the United States. Of this, we know that like 12.8 million businesses have no website. So 90 when they go online, um, I mean, not to purchase, they literally go online and they have a positive experience. But if the businesses that we're trying to serve in communities and neighborhoods are not even visible, that means there's a lost opportunity. So we began to dig more and get, and, get, and get into the data and into the weeds a little bit, and we realized that 46% of businesses have no website. So we said there's a huge opportunity to be able to address this issue, to be able to help make businesses visible. How many people have ever tried to go to a place of business and you went into, um, um, and you went into Google Maps and, and you didn't find them? What did you do? I went somewhere else, right? So now nah, I didn't call them. I, I was, I'm, if it says it's closed in Google Maps, I'm assuming you're closed. Or if it's permanently closed or if the hours are wrong or if you're not even there. And so what happened that great businesses are not even getting opportunities because we're not even visible. And so, and so we said, that's the work that we want to focus on. And so we began to go down this path of being able to work specifically on addressing this problem. So we talked about that already. And so what happened is that we began to go into neighborhoods. We started here in Detroit, but then we started to go into neighborhoods all across the United States. And we began to find different pockets of, of, of entrepreneurs that we could work with. So we were in Newark and we, and we had a chance to work with this group of entrepreneurs called Moms Who Hustle. So I'd always heard about mompreneurs, but I had never heard about I never really thought about single mothers who were working full-time jobs, who were full-time parents, and who were running businesses. And the hustle and the grit and the drive of these women was like, was off the chart, right? And so we had a chance to be able to work with this specific community of entrepreneurs, and we began to find that there are other entrepreneurs out of just college students who are doing amazing work. And so I want to... Um, so I, wanna, I want you to listen to one of the entrepreneurs that we had a chance to um, actually talk to. Her name is Mia X. My name is Margie Johnson, and I perform as Mia X, so that's why everybody calls me kind of Mia X. I'm known as Mia X, um, but I'm a writer, a poet, a performance artist, a director, producer, I do a lot of different things. And I perform as Mia X, and I have a lot of art in the community. So I'm a graduate from Temple University. Um, with a degree in African American studies, so I felt charged to do something. And art is my passion. Coming back from Philadelphia, being in New York, was like I wanted to do something in my community. So I started just organizing and just writing and working and building. And here I am, like eight, nine, almost nine years later. And my name is Raya Mills. I'm excited. I'm proud of what I'm doing. I've been I don't look through the whole video, but she is a she is a poet. And so she's the mother of, I mean, um, and so she has four kids. She's a single mother. But having the opportunity to be able to work with her, to be able to get her site online. So the name of her business is called, um, it's called Imagine Life. And so as we were working with her, putting together her site, we were looking for different ways to do it. So we said, you know, let's be creative with domain names. So as the work that you're doing, um, thinking about ways to be able to help your clients to become more creative when there's a limited budget. So we said, okay, all right, so Imagine Life is already taken, but there is this thing called Dot Life. So why don't we get We Imagine Dot Life? And so it's the little things that you can do in terms of working with your clients to get them to think outside so that you can help them to reimagine their actual, their actual business. And so, and so as a part of our process, we're taking pictures so that we can help her to be able to grow her business. And even the small things of integrating PayPal and ways to take payments, because she was doing a thing that was called hugging the block. And I was like, okay, explain to me what hugging the block is. Explain to me how we can turn it into a business model that a corporation can understand that they can actually fund, right? And so, and so when we start to work with entrepreneurs in neighborhoods, it gives us an opportunity to be able to do like really meaningful work. And I'm not against corporations, I'm not against huge, huge businesses, but it's nice when you have a chance to be able to know the people that you work with. And you have a chance to be able to do something that we know is impacting her family, is impacting the bottom line. And so, and so if you look at if you look at entrepreneurship, in my opinion, entrepreneurship is like this. 
is a non-linear process, right? So every day I literally wake up and figure out what am I not going to do today, right? Because this is what is like, okay, I got all the stuff to do, the way to get it done, and you can read all the blogs online and tell you all the things about SEO and all these other kind of things, but I can show you people who break every single rule and stuff works, right? And so at the end of the day, you have to figure out you know, what is the work that you're going to do? What were you created and purpose to do? And then figure out a way to be able to get it done. The other part is that it takes community to get this stuff done. So what I realize is that I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter how smart I think I am. I need people that believe in me. I need people to work with. The work we're doing with Rebrand Cities, the reason that we're able to do it is because of a man by the name of John Mida. He is the, um, he is the, um, the global head of design for WordPress Slack. He believed in our project when in times where I was in the room. And so for each one of you, there are times where you become a sponsor or you have a chance to be a voice for someone where you can literally open up a door that can change the actual trajectory of that actual business or that person's life. And so again, entrepreneurship, if you were unclear and you needed a picture, I just wanted to make sure that you had a clear graphic on what entrepreneurship looked like because that's what like every single day is just is, um, is a new adventure. So the project that we're doing literally is we're helping to create brands for $300. So I know sometimes we're making a lot of money. We're rolling in the dough. But our goal is how can we help get a business online and only charge them $300? The hosting plan that we're using through WordPress is $300. So that means that we have some life funding that allows us to have a team together, but we're going into neighborhoods saying, we can now help you to, we can help build a brand for you for $300. And what this means is that it includes photography, it includes website design, it includes branding workshops that we actually do with our businesses because we know that they don't have an unlimited budget. And our goal is if we can get them online, then the next step is now, how do we now help them to use this as a lever to make money, right? And so this is what we're charging. And if they want to make your photos, then we can charge a little bit more. But our goal is for three hundred dollars, right? So again, that's our goal. And so and so we're going into neighborhoods doing like amazing things, and these are all of the things that are included in it that are a part of being able to kind of help tell the story. So some of the businesses, I don't know if you've ever been to, um, if you've ever seen this gentleman right here. So he is a local business, um, and he's in, um, he's I think of like Cass Street, I think it is. Um, and he has a men's shop, um, and it's called Blue Boutique. So we're working with him. So he's a, a great entrepreneur doing amazing work. The food that you had, El Carabino, um, or the speaker, I guess like the speaker dinner we had last night, we actually had food from Southwest, right? So, and so one of the entrepreneurs of the restaurant that we actually had a chance to be able to work with. This is a gentleman in, in, um, in Chicago who had an idea for sauce, and he had no label on the sauce. But I said, <laughs> well, I wasn't meaning it for that. <laughs> She's like, I'm not going to eat that sauce. Okay, no, no okay, no. <laughs> so the purpose of me saying it was not that, okay. But, but I feel what you're saying. You're like, okay, I'm going to put this to the side right here. We're not going to eat that sauce. No, no but the reason that I, I'm saying is that, is that sometimes we allow things to stop us from getting started, right? Because in this world of social media, we're all trying to be perfect. And what happens is that perfection is the enemy of done. And so, and so in, in this, you know, in this, in this fast paced world of 24 hour media cycles and seeing the slices of everybody's life, and then we start to aggregate this into one person and think that everybody's going on vacations every day. Right. And that's not happening because all we do is show the good highlights and, and I'm a victim. The only time I check in is when I'm in the airport, at the gym. Like, there's a lot of bad stuff every now and then happens in my life, but you never see that stuff. Like it's all, it's all the good stuff. Right. So this is kind of what we do, and we become prisoners sometimes, but, but I commended him because he did not stop a label from, from having him do what he did, even though he knew that you would need his sauce, right? But I'm challenging you, I'm challenging you from a thinking standpoint, because we always talk about get out of the classroom and get out of the office and get in front of a customer. Right, and try something and figure out what works and what doesn't work. So I want to come in, Damon. We're working with Lopez Tires, right? Some some tremendous local business that have amazing stories, so that these stories can actually be told. And so and so the reason I really want to come here today was just to empower and to encourage you that the work that you're doing, 
like this stuff, like it really, 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 really matters, right? Because you're working with real people. Sometimes we start to put numbers over people and we start to just look at people as a project or as a job, but like these are real people and how they eat and how they manage their family. A lot of this is connected to the work that we're actually doing. We're working with more companies doing like really, really cool stuff. These are some of the websites. But at the end of the day, what happens here is that is that, that our work is really about humanizing our actual process and about understanding and about bringing access to amazing businesses. So we've worked with some actual developers here. So we've worked with Laura, all right? So she did the, you know what I'm saying? So she did the, uh, the El Caribbean on site and she did a few more. We also worked with Chris, I think, right back there. And the Chris has worked with us. So, so we've had a chance to work with some local developers, but ultimately our goal is to be able to help put good work um, into the community and to make a difference. So what I want to do now is I want to open up the floor for questions because I know I can solve world peace and I can solve hunger with all the great things that I'm saying. But instead of doing that, every, every great thinks that they have the answer. But I understand that people want to hear themselves talk. So what I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity to look smart, to get on video, and that we can hear your thought-provoking question. So again, I just want to open up the floor for questions. Okay, right here. Have you ever approached someone and them said, "No, you know, we're we're okay. We don't we don't need your help." Yes, yes. Um, we were working. You know, what I'm saying this whole project started by doing free websites. We were doing the stuff, and it was just free. And so we went to the one business, and we're like, we'd "Love to help you to get a website." No, we don't need a website. Their website was a flyer online. It was like literally a flyer. <laughs> I was like, "Do you need a website?" Right? <laughs> but you know, like you can't call somebody ugly right so if you know if that's fine for you or maybe the business works because it's in a community and they have enough people coming from the community and they're like you know what I don't need your help so I you know this is how I live my life I go where I'm celebrated not where I'm tolerated so so if you want my help at that's trust me I go back to that design that has all these little things going on here there's a lot of stuff that I could do with my time so so I would rather pour my time and energy into people who really want my help so that's the kind of way I look at things. And, and plus, I don't take it personal. Right? Next question. Okay. Um, so at the social media So that's a good thing. Um, so, so we try to do as much as possible. One of the challenges that we've run into is that a lot of them aren't on, aren't on social. Right? So, so then trying to get them acclimated and trying to figure out what platform to integrate them into. Because there are lots of different platforms and people ask me, well, what platform should you use? I would rather you focus on one platform and pour your time and energy into it versus trying to be across the board in everything. Even though from a brand standpoint, you should secure those assets. Even though you do not own the platform, securing those handles is a part of your IP, right? So I think that that's important. So we're trying to get them more acclimated to it, um, but we want to get them using platforms that they are going to be more sustainable and they're going to actually create content for. How long term is the um, process when you have a client? Is that a year? Yeah, so, um, so when Ricky started and our process has pivoted, we would go in, we would do the workshops, and then we would take probably a few weeks to get like sites actually, actually done. So now our process has shifted to doing the main work in a single day. And so our goal is because what we realize, these entrepreneurs are working 10 to 12 hour days, trying to get them out of their business for multiple days. And when you're going into other cities, it becomes very difficult to be able to do all of those things. And so now our goal is, can we start in the morning and by the end of the day, take you through an entire process and have typically, now the sites are about 70% done, but our goal is, can we get it all the way done? So we just did one in Chicago, and at the part of that process, we had some developers who were remote, we had some developers who were physically there, we started out, walked them through, and by the end of the day, we had, we had really put a, a, a really big dent in it. So our goal is to be able to do these, and to be able to make these things happen in a day. Now, there's other things that happen after that. We have training. We have other stuff that we do after that. So we have webinars and all kinds of other things that are actually like a part of it, right? So, um, so it's not like we just leave them, right? But we want to be able to get to a point because with an entrepreneur, you need to be able to show them like something that you can play. So our goal is if we can get something done, it builds their confidence to then want to do more stuff. And so at the end of the day, is it a $10,000 website? No. 
But our goal is we're going to get you from zero to 60, get you online, and then from there we can look for ways to be able to add plugins and other things to be able to make it more functional so it can drive economics to the business. So one of the businesses that we work with was called Mommy May, a mommy blog, you know, got her site up, she did an event, in four days she was able to generate $1,000 in four days. So like that's real money. So like for a corporation that might not seem like a lot of money, but for an entrepreneur to raise a thousand dollars by just putting something online, that was amazing. So now we're going to help her to be able to replicate that, right? And that's important. And that's real, real money. Next question. That's it. No more. Okay, all right. Go ahead. So you really see what this How far have you gotten your goal? So so far, I think we're probably close to about maybe one to two hundred sites. You know what I'm saying? So we have a lot of work to do. Um, and what we're doing is that we're spending time perfecting the model of kind of how this stuff happens, right? Because the more efficient that we are in the model, it will allow us to be able to make this thing happen and become more of a machine. As a part of it, we need to be able to attract other other creatives and developers and we need to we need to be able to pull people part of our motto is is that if there's a certain portion of volunteerism that is going to be required as a part of this so what John has really kind of challenged me on is can you pull together this global community of thought leaders and of creatives and of developers um, and as we're doing it what we're finding is that we're able to create opportunities for other people who need these services right and so we had and event at the Apple Store, we pulled in Donor and some other people. And so we're starting to really start to curate this. So I would love to be able to talk to individuals here if you're a developer or creative, if you're a photographer or things like that, because we would love to be able to make you a part of our community or we become a part of your community, right? And so, and so we're definitely interested in being able to work with people who have domain knowledge in their space. Okay, yep. Talked about branding and just wanted to know um, can a organization, a company, an entrepreneur evolve their brand? So if I start off with a with a local color scheme, whatever, a year later decide that ain't working, I need to switch to something else. Give me time. Yes. So how, how, how do you how, how do you how do you what's the evolution of a good brand? So that's a great question. And so and so so a brand is more than just logo, it's more than just identity. And so if you really think about a brand, it's really this collection of, of, um, of interactions, um, experiences, and touch points that people have with a person, a product, um, an organization, um, a thought leader. And what it does is that it ultimately drives the economics of that business. And so what happens is that everything evolves. Everything, everything changes. And so, and so what happens is, is, that, is, that, is that part of the process of being an entrepreneur or being entrepreneurial is that, is that you're figuring out what your business model is. And so as you figure out the business model, things naturally change, right? And so, and so I don't see anything wrong with that. But as you're doing it, there are certain costs that kind of come along with it. So if you go invest in science and, and all kinds of stuff that you then have to change, then there's a higher cost to be able to change those things. But when you're putting together a brand, I would think about this. Um, think about like the actual, the actual name, right? Think about the, um, think about the digital real estate that's connected to that. Think about owning the conversation online because that's important, right? Um, and if you need to get a trademark, think about now not all lawyers are equal. Not all lawyers are equal. Now, I have, I've done trademarks for $425, right? And I ended up having to get a higher price lawyer. And we currently use Jaffe. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, that's our actual, actual. So those things might cost $3,500. But I can go to sleep at night. Because I know our stuff is secure. So, again, but having, having the right information becomes important. Um, because once you develop something that now becomes this great asset, people then will actually want to come back and, and maybe try to take that from you, right? More specifically, if I choose the wrong domain name now and mm -hmm. want to switch because it's not working, I find out there's an issue, mm -hmm. what do I do to change it to bring that? Because I figure out, I'm, well, like, I got a name, but my name is crowded. There's lots of people with yep. the same name yes. or similar to it. Yes. And, it's, and it's diverting stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. So how do you... So I would make the change. Yeah. I'll do my research and I'll make sure that if I'm changing to something, it is something that it makes sense for me to change to so I'm not changing it. And then a week later or a month later, I'm going back and I'm changing it 
again. And then if you have followers online, you know, there's a whole series of things that you have to do just to make sure that those channels are changed. I would, I would still maintain the old handle, um, and I would just forward them, you know, I like to the new handle, you know, since there's a series of things that you would do, but I would make the change, right? You know what I'm saying? Because, yes. And we can talk in more detail. All right. So I know we have a few more minutes. Are there any more questions? All right. We have a great question in the back. Go ahead. So what we've done is that we've had channel partners in a different city. So locally, we have worked a lot with Tech Town. We're starting to do some work now with Prosperous. Um, and so, so identifying channel partners inside of cities have been critically important. And when we've gone to other markets, we've actually worked with university anchors. We've also had economic development corporations in Newark and things like that that allow us that already have a list of businesses. So we don't need to go vet the businesses out. What's starting to happen now is that we're starting to ha now have actual, I guess, like municipal partners actually reaching out to us. So, so we're in conversations right now with the city of Liverpool. Um, and so their smart city like reached out to us and they want us to work with about 100 businesses there. And so I'm excited because I've never been to the UK before. And so I said, we can work on this and I go to UK right now. No, no. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, so it's been interesting, but our goal is, is, that, is that as we start to develop more relationships, it gives us an opportunity to be able to have different types of conversations and to be able to target different kind of entrepreneurs. So, so if we have economic development corporations or people who would love to scholarship neighborhoods in, we can go in and work with a specific community of entrepreneurs in that, um, in that actual geo. All right, next question. Okay, go ahead. So it's a combination of all those. So now there is a perception that, that this cost me thousands of dollars. Like it's gonna cost thousands of dollars. So we don't even ask the question, right? So part of it is gonna be like this perception. Um, then where do you find a good developer at? Right? So so like I'm in a space and and so I kind of know where to go, but imagine being an entrepreneur and you've already had a couple bad experiences, you know, or or you've had somebody develop the site and then you can't find them anymore. And then once you can't find them, and then that theme now is outdated, and so now you don't even know how to log in. So now they have a series of those kind of issues, or they feel like, I don't even need it because I'm in Instagram. So, like, I don't need it, right? <laughs> and maybe if you have a sneaker boutique and you have sneakers that are going to drop, it works. But now sometimes they're like, I don't need it because I can just I can just do something in Facebook. Right. So it's a series of things, but a lot of it is building this trust. And what we want to do is that because there's going to be times when we start to work with an entrepreneur and they're going to need to work with other developers even beyond us. And we want to be able to connect developers that we know to the business owners because they need to have people local and people that they trust. Right. So it's a series of reasons why really trying to build that trust becomes critically important. I know I stand between you and lunch, but I think, okay, right. Good. So in all of the businesses that you've identified, you don't have websites. Have you found a clear delineation? Yeah. So, so even, even, even in our process, we have identified people who are outside of the scope of what we do. And so we met this company that does, um, they are, they are based in Newark and they, um, and they are an organic, I think, farm, you know, um, right inside of the city of Newark and they are, and they're the largest vertical farm in America. Right. And so and so they wanted to work with us, but their project didn't fit inside of this. But because of the other work, we had a chance to be able to meet them and know the things that become other leads for other people that we can work with. Right. Um, so what we found is that we focused on one specific customer.
but doing that has given us visibility into other customers. So I think part of part of what you're saying is, okay, how do I target my exact audience, right? To be able to identify people who can pay for the services or things. But I think the main thing is that people have to be able to see the work that you do, right? And be able to connect and be able to experience that. Um, like, like if you say that you're worth $10,000, I want to be able to like, like that website better sing and do all kind of like <laughs> stuff for $10,000 for me, right? Well, no, I don't let music on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> because I'm sure you're not doing flash sites and stuff like that, right? No. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm just saying, you know, I like that's, you know, that's a very specific customer. Um, most of the entrepreneurs that, that I've talked to, you know, that's way above their price grade, right? So, you know what I'm saying? So understanding that customer um, and, and being able to specifically target that, I think would be, would be actually key. What are some of the testimonies? What are some of the things that you're doing from a, um, from a call to action in terms of being able to get people down your funnel? I'll never forget, there was a guy that I was actually interested in doing some work with, and so I guess this guy was a consultant. And so I guess he had this funnel. And so, and so I emailed him, followed back up with this guy, and then, and, then, and then this machine just started happening. He was like, okay, so if you want to talk to me, you can set up the first call, which is $1,000. I, like, I was like, dude, uh, there's nobody on the planet that I'm going to spend $1,000 on a phone call with. And that's why I get these other emails that, you know, I need to set up this consulting thing with him, and it'll be $1,500, um, and we have to do it for three months. And so sometimes we set up these funnels or these mousetraps that are not humanized. Right. And they're and they're based on stuff that we've read online. So we read all the stuff online about all of these things. These are the five steps that you do. And maybe it works for Chris Brogan, you know, and, you know, he, he's going and making 10, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars. Right. So but for everybody else, you have to figure out something that's going to be humanized, that's going to be able to work, to be able to get to the target customer that you want. Right. And as an entrepreneur, we have challenges because we have to understand our price. I'll never forget. Um, I was speaking um, at this um, at this pharmaceutical company, um, and and I was on a phone call with them, and we were trying to you know, and they were asking me like my price, and I gave them what I thought was a pretty good price. So then I ended up meeting the lady who was over finance after I had did my thing, and she was like, "Hi, you were the best speaker that we had all year, and when you gave your price online, we you know we cringed." So I undersold myself by thirty thousand dollars. Now I mean not. Now, once I told my wife this, <laughs> her frustration level went through the roof. She's like, you left that much money on the table? So because for me, I didn't know anybody in my circle that had made that much money for speaking for an hour, right? So now, now it took me two years. I got the money back, but it took me two years to get there, right? But the whole point was, was understanding how money works and understanding pricing. And as an entrepreneur, we've all mispriced stuff. If you haven't mispriced anything, that means that you're not an entrepreneur. I mean, because like, I, and, and when you had a wrong customer, what happens? Those are the worst, right? Because they, I mean, because like they have champagne taste and Kool-Aid money, right? And so, and so then that becomes a challenge. So again, pricing stuff becomes important, but you learn this stuff over time. I think I have time for a couple more questions before we go. Any more questions? Okay, right here. Do you focus mostly on kind of inception and, and the clients from you know, zero that are you know, online, or do you also work with them you know, with mature websites and, and then take them to that next level and, and do any like customer experience is huge now, mm -hmm. and journey mapping and all that stuff. Um, I know that includes more touch points, but. Yes. So at the part of our process, we will continue to evolve it. And so there are some people that already have sites. And so we might export content from something that they already have. Um, and the part of what we're doing is that, is that we're creating these boot camps that are like four day experiences. And then we're going to start to have other, other, other educational things that I actually offer. But the main thing is that we had to get the main part of the process tight. Because if we don't develop the site right, it doesn't matter about all the other stuff that we do. Right. And then and then on top of that, how do you package that and communicate that to somebody? Because at first we were telling people we do websites and that's like saying, OK, I'm going to sell you an engine when we're really selling a car. 
because we have we have we have we have photography branding all these other things so even trying to put all this stuff together so that they could understand the whole value of what they're getting right becomes critically important and the stories that you hear like I was on the phone with a young lady yesterday and I was like she was running through her life history she was telling me how she had barriers of entry to work Tell me how she couldn't vote. I mean, like she was running through. She didn't have a birth certificate. Like, I mean, I was like, ma'am, this story is getting a little too deep for me right now. I mean, like I was she was giving me her whole life story. And I say that because um, the work that we're doing is like it's like it's really impactful. It's really work with extremely real people. Right. OK, go ahead. You have, okay. I'm assuming somewhere along the way you hired a client. Any suggestions? On I have I, I have fired. Clients. I fired good friends of mine who I grew up in the youth department with who were working with me. Um, at the end of the day, um, you should never hire anybody to fire. I mean, yes, I mean, because at the end of the day, it's just it's not going to work, right? Um, and so what I've realized with certain clients, um, I remember doing this, and then then I get documents back from them, legal stuff saying that, you know, just all kinds of different things. But what I've done is that I've always made sure that I deliver what I say I was going to do. And, um, and then if it's time for us to stop, <laughs> then what I do is, you know, is that I move on. Because at, because at the end of the day, my peace of mind is more important. I don't care how much money you have. At the end of the day, my peace of mind is important to me. And that's critical. I don't know if we have time for one more question before we wrap it up. Or we Okay. I ask last question and we're done. And I can ask the questions offline, whatever. Go ahead. That is a great question. So we got a slide right here. Okay, we got a quick slide. Okay, so we're seeking developers who want to make an impact. So you can email us at hello at rebrand.city. So we are looking to work with tremendous people who are um, who are committed to the cause, who want to make a difference, and um, and just and just be a part of the family. So so again, that's it right there. Um, I hope you enjoyed my talk. I kind of changed it because I wanted to make sure that we had enough time to be able to answer questions. And again. I'm sure we solve world peace hunger. Nobody's hungry in here and things like that. But we have lunch. So thank you very much. Oh.